Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to STD Gems. Today we're gonna look at what I like to call the permutators or the the permuters. I don't know. Doesn't matter. So, modifying sequence operator operations. We're actually gonna finish this whole section today, and that's nice. What we've got left are guys like reverse, guys like rotate, guys like shuffle, and what they have in common is they take your uh, elements in your container and they move them all around. They don't change their values or anything, they don't add or remove any. They just change the order of elements in a container. And it's really simple. You know, look at reverse. It takes a range and it's gonna reverse that range. So I mean that's obviously gonna look like this. It's gonna work in place on the vector. It's gonna mutate the vector itself. And you get what you would expect. You got a vector here going from 0 to 10. You reverse it, it goes from 10 to 0. We also have reverse copy which does the same thing, only you can output. It doesn't work in place. You can output, if you like, to a different container or to a different position in the same container. Or maybe not even to a container at all. You could output to a stream if you like. Just, I'll leave it up to you. So there you go, reverse, obviously gonna be useful. It comes up quite often. You have to reverse a sequence of items. And very simple, on the same kind of uh, theme there, we have shift left and shift right. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory what these guys do. I mean, if, if you got a container like this, it contains one, two, three, four, you shift right by two. Uh, one, two is gonna be here. And these first two elements are gonna be what? They're basically gonna be garbage. It says here, elements that are in the original range but not in the new range are left in a valid but unspecified state. So let's see what happens when we do this. Or maybe not because apparently Microsoft Visual C++, the standard library, does not support these days. C++ 20 functions, so I guess it's, you know, it's not surprising that it's not supported. On the other hand, it's not that complicated. Come on, guys, get on this shit. And apparently it is not available in GCC either, so I guess get, get fucked, chili. Um, but, I mean, I hope you can get an idea of how you would use this. It's not that complicated, is it? I don't think so. Now let's move on. So uh, yeah, shift left and shift right are going to be a thing one day. Uh, but you know what is a thing today? Rotate. Rotate is a thing you can do, which is very similar to shifting. So how does it work? So it doesn't work the way you would think it works. The way you would think is probably, you know, you would rotate to the right or to the left by n positions, just like shift. But this one doesn't work that way. What it, How it works is you give it a range and then you give it an iterator to the element that you want to be the beginning of the range after it has been rotated, and it will perform a rotation. You might ask, what kind of rotation, left or right? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's a rotation. Uh, you, whether you rotate left or right, you can still get the same starting, uh, starting element, and you'll have the same sequence whether you move to the left or the right. So the answer is it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, all you got to do is give it a range, you give it an element, and it will rotate such that the element you gave it becomes the beginning of the sequence. And in code it's going to look something like this, you give it a range, and then you got to give it a iterator to the new beginning. Which for some reason, like I would think it would be, you know, give it the range and then the final parameter would be the new beginning. But no, you put the new beginning in the middle for some reason. So fine. Have it your way. Begin plus Three. So I think that'll put three at the beginning. Run it. And there you go. It's been rotated such that it starts from three. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, and then zero, one, two. And again, you could get this by rotating to the left by three. You could also get it by rotating all the way around the right. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who cares how it gets done as long as it gets done. And another thing I just like to remind you every now and then is that, you know, most of the time we run these uh, algorithms over an entire container. But of course, don't forget, you can run it over any subset of the container you want. So here I'm going to range from, you know, three to eight, and I'm going to make uh, five the new beginning within that range. So if we do that, you can see here that we have uh, rotated this part here. And so now five has become the new beginning within this subsequence here. And again, you've got a copy version if you so desire. So there you go. Reverse, rotate, shift, someday. And last but definitely not least, we have shuffle. 
and shuffle is pretty darn useful in games, especially, you know, I don't know if you're making a, like a card game, probably gonna wanna shuffle stuff, but not just card games, lots of games. I use this guy all the freaking time. And all it does is it just jumbles up the order of elements in a container. Man, nothing could be easier. You got your, you got your random engine here. You give it a range. You give it a random engine. And it is gonna shuffle yo shit. That's a proper shuffled sequence. Let's run that again. Look at that. Shuffle, it's amazing. Works every time. And that, my friends, is it. That is all of the modifying sequence operations. So we've we've knocked out the non-modifying, wink wink, and modifying sequence operations. We're well on our way to conquering the entire algorithm library. But there are a couple more uh, permuter, permutation boys in here. I mean, obviously, partitioning, sorting, that is also rearranging the elements in a container. But really, these guys deserve their own videos. So we're not gonna cover those today. No partitioning, no sorting. Uh, other things like heap operations is another one. But again, these guys get their own videos because they're pretty important. But if we go down here, permutation operations, hmm, maybe this one has something to do with permutations. So, eh, these guys are weird. Uh, they're a little complicated, but I mean, it's not rocket science. The one thing about them is that I have never had an occasion to actually use them. I've never found a really good application. Had to do a little research even to come up with a good application. But in the interests of being complete, I am going to cover it quickly. So what is next permutation? Well, so let's say I got a string here. We'll set it equal to A, B, C, D. Now all a string is, is it's a sequence of characters. It's a sequence, it's a container. The elements are characters, right? Uh, so we can run algorithms on that. And if I run next permutation on A, B, C, D, you're gonna get A, B, D, C, which is a permutation of those letters. And it is the next permutation. So how do we know which permutation? Because there's obviously like a bunch of permutations of those four letters, right? How do we know which permutation is the next permutation? Now, if I were to print out all the permutations of this sequence of characters, it would look something like this. And this isn't just any old ordering of the permutations. This is called the lexicographical ordering, which basically means if you put these words in the dictionary, uh, then they would be in this relative order. I don't think I don't think dikba is a word, but if it were a word, it would come after all these other quote unquote words. So that's the lexicographical ordering of permutations. And that is the ordering that next permutation will give you. So if you pass it BDAC and you, you tell it to give you the next permutation, it's going to give you BIDCA. And it also has one more feature, and that is the return value. So normally it will return true, but if you give it the final permutation, then it is going to rearrange it to be the beginning here and it will return false. So what you can do is you can start with a sequence that is pre-sorted. And the pre-sorted sequence will be guaranteed to be the first one in the lexicographical uh, sequence of permutations. So this is guaranteed to be the first permutation in the sequence because it's sorted A, B, C, D. And then you can just call next permutation in a loop uh, until it returns false. Because when it returns false, that means that you are at the final permutation. And that will print out all the permutations in their lexicographical ordering. And likewise, if I go D, C, B, A, and I go previous, previous permutation, previous permutation, permutation, um, then it should give me the sequence, but in reverse. And indeed it does. It starts off from Dikpa, and we go all the way down to Abgd. And there you have it. There is next and previous permutation. And you might be asking, okay, great, Chili. So what can I use this for? And that's actually a very good question. I, I did a Google search and I came up to this Reddit thread. Has anyone actually used the next permutation? And the answer is pretty much no, except for one thing, and that is testing. So if you have some test data and you want to test, uh, it's a sequence, and you want to test all permutations of that sequence against your, your algorithm to see if your algorithm is correct, this is a very nice way of doing that, generating all the permutations without any overlap. 
because the thing about this is it, it doesn't give you all the permutations. It gives you all the unique permutations. So if I were to say have one B A A A, you're going to get far fewer permutations because a lot of the permutations of these four letters aren't unique. And the last guy I'm going to talk about today isn't a permuter per se. It's a function is permutation and it just it allows you to check whether uh, you can check two sequences to see if one sequence is a permutation of the other sequence or not. So you give it a full range of the first sequence and you give it an in input iterator for the second sequence and it will check to see if one is a permutation of the other. You can also give it a custom uh, com comparator if you like. You can also give it a full range for the first and the second sequence if you like. There's plenty of options, but I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So here I've got three sequences of characters. I'm going to check to see if sequence one is a permutation of sequence two. And then I'm going to check to see if sequence one is a permutation of sequence three. And if we run it true and false, which is what you should expect from these sequences. Again, straightforward. And this guy probably more likely to be useful than the next and previous permutation. But that's going to about do it for today. We're finally done these two big general sections of sequence operations. And now we can move into these specialized little groups. So every video from now on, it's basically going to be one of these sections here, partitioning, sorting, binary search, etc., etc. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more STD gems. Mm -hmm.